Well, hello guys, it's been a while since I've been back out on the bank doing a bit of carp fishing, but we're out again, and this time it's for the YouTube Bloggers event. It, I would call it the match, but it's a bit more of a social more than anything. It's just a bit of excuse to get together with like-minded people and just enjoy a bit of fishing. The venue this year is Digger Lakes, and we're on Snails Lake in particular, a venue that I have fished before. If you've watched my videos in the past, you would have seen me on it a few times, and I have managed to catch a few fish from here, and there's some good fish in here to be had. More about the session, I've already got the three rods out on the spots that I'm probably going to stick with, see what happens, m maybe move them about and see if I can find some fish, but I've actually came out first in the draw we did a watercraft draw this year something a little bit different and i kept managed to come out first a bit a bit lucky but i'd chosen a swim called tire island there were fish in here earlier when we did the initial walk around and it's a swim that i know does a few bites in the past from friends that fish it so i'm hoping we're going to get into a few fish this weekend i'll run through more about my tactics and my approach a bit later but fingers crossed we'll get a few on the bank having a very good friend of mine fish this particular lake on a regular basis really has helped with my swim choice. I knew that in the back of my mind I really wanted to get in this peg and as soon as I seen fish in here I knew this is where I was going to be beelining for if I could come out well in the draw and luckily I came out first. In terms of spots like I said my friend that's fished it previously he has caught a few fish on here so he has put me onto a couple of spots. In particular on my left hand rod there's a nice set of lilies out towards um, the island and just to the right of that we've got overhanging trees that litter the whole island but just to the right of those lilies there's a nice cove where you can just about get a bait quite tight to the island and tight to those lily pads as well and it's really nice and clear. I have gone for a uh, yellow NS1 pop-up on that particular rod because I know yellow works really well on this lake. On my centre rod on the same island but further out into the middle of my particular swim there's uh, near the point there's again enough a cove in amongst some of the trees and it allows me to get really tight to that island so i've got my center rod there and that's on a wafter odyssey triple x wafter and then my right hand rod i had a bit of a lead about because i was really unsure where to put that in some of the swims two rods would probably do you but in this particular swim there is quite a bit of water to go out and plenty of options so I had a bit of a lead about, managed to find a relatively clear spot out towards the, the lily bed that's sort of in the centre of the swim. So I've got the rod there for now. I'm not convinced that that's where it's going to be the whole session. I have got some lilies down to my right hand side, which I put some pellet in earlier. So that's always an option because I know they do like to come in close on this lake as well. But that is again on the yellow NS1 pop up because I really think that that's going to going to get me a bite. In terms of the actual setup I'm using, I've got the Crosscast EXT 10 foot 3 pound test curve models paired up with the Whisker 25 QD reels and that setup there makes up the majority of my fishing for these small to mid sized venues. Just coming into the first evening it's been quite a rather uneventful afternoon for me i have seen a few fish in the area coming in and cruising i did try to get them on floaters um, but they just weren't having it they were just cruising under the surface not really interested in any bait joe in the swim next to me has lost one a few hours ago so there are fish starting to get on the munch I have just redone my right hand rod just because I wasn't confident in the first cast and I wanted to redo it knowing that it's going to be sitting pretty overnight and as I cast it just spooked the fish off the spot but in the last sort of 20 minutes I've started to see fish about 15 yards past that spot where to the left of the lilies so if I don't get anything indication before last light I might just replace that rod a little bit further I know it's clear out there from when I was leading about earlier but it's looking good for a few bites tonight. It's starting to drop off cooler in temperature, so I'm pretty confident for the night ahead. Well, first fish. 
just deep in sleep. It's about six o'clock in the morning. My left hand rod's ripped off. I'm trying to put a bit of pressure on this because it is extremely weedy down there. I feel I've got it through the worst of it. But it is extremely meaty, weedy just under the bank. So I'm trying to keep its head up so it can't bury itself in there. But what a result. It's just got lead caught cool under its peck. I'm going to try and make a stab at this because I've got a tree above me. This isn't a textbook netting by any means tip stuck in the tree. Again. Yes. Come on. First fish of the trip. That's the blank saver. It's so awkward here because you've got a tree above you. You've got loads of weeds just trying to get a good angle on it. It's not bad one actually. Well, what a fish that is to kick off the YouTube bloggers event. 23 and four ounces. And that was taken on the left hand rod, just in between that cove and the overhanging trees, just to the right of the lilies, on an NS1 yellow pop-up. Absolutely nailed in the bottom lip. Such a long fish and such a dense fish. Didn't really fight too much on the way in, but it's given me a good battering on the bank. Thankfully, because there's a lot of weed present, I'm quite happy that it didn't scrap too hard, but what a result. Oh, that went down perfect. Well, a massive donk as well. That is the cast. Just gonna hold the, another thing while you're fishing weedy lakes as well. As you can see, I've got a lot of weed in close, about probably to two thirds out. So I'm keeping the rod tip high, which is keeping the, the line out of the water. And once I see that bit of foam come up, what I'll do is I'll pay off a bit of line. So the line sinks before before it then reaches the weed on my side. So that way you're getting a nice line lay. Doesn't matter if it's going tight past over that weed bed, but as long as I've got a bit of slack between the weed and the bait, I'm happy. So now I'm just gonna pay off a bit of slack. Let that line sink. Just reach the re weed bed now. That's perfect, at least I know I've got a nice line laying past the weed it doesn't really matter too much what it's going to do in that weed That overhanging tree. I'll try and keep your keep your head up here. Oh, I've picked up some sort of snag. Luckily, I can feel a fish. Well, there we go. What about that? 20 pound, two ounces. Same again, left hand rod. Just by those lilies in that cove of overhanging trees. They're definitely on the munch now. There's a lot of fish in the, in the swim, a lot of activity. We'll get the rod back out, slip this one back, hopefully get enough one, but this one's an absolute cracker. I will show you the other side because it's a peach. 
And there's the other side, what about that then? Proper scaly fish. A few battle scars, probably spawning, but what a result, can't be happier. It's looking like there's a few more on the cards as well. Get in, happy days. Well, what a productive morning for me. Two fish off the exact same spot. It just goes to show that finding that spot on these sort of lakes where it's really weedy, finding the clear spot where the fish like to feed can often lead in multiple bites. I mean, it's probably about 40 minutes between the two bites. It just goes to show that the fish do often visit those clear spots once you can find them. The plan for today, we're going to have a bit of a social this afternoon so everyone can get back for the evening to get their rods out because it is weedy, you want to make sure everything's spot on and you want it to be doing that in daylight. So that's the plan for the afternoon. Hopefully we'll get a few more fish later on this evening. We've just got back from the social. We had a few beers, played a few games and had plenty of laughs, but back to the fishing now. I've got all three rods out on the spot with bait around them. My left hand rod, no explanation needed. It's gone straight under that canopy of trees where I've had the two bites earlier on this morning. My middle rod, I did manage to find a spot just before I left for the social. It's about five or six foot off of the island, but it is a relatively clear spot. It looks like um, the fish have been visiting and feeding off it quite regularly and on my right hand rods I've gone just past the lilies and if I'm honest I've actually struggled to find a clear spot in the area I wanted to present the bait but I have managed to find something that's probably around a dinner plate size it's taken me six attempts with the rig on to actually get it bang on but I am confident that that's in the right area now all three baits exactly the same yellow NS1 pop-up it's so what's done the bite so far and I feel like that's my best chance of getting enough of bite before the end of the session. A few more catapults of bait went out but now it's just about to get dark. We're probably going to lose the light very quickly now within the next 20 to 30 minutes but it does feel good for enough of bite so I am, I am going into the night pretty confident that we'll get enough of one. Definitely glad I moved this rod last night because that spot, I was just let go of the weed. That spot over in that cove wasn't me doing me any bites. But this new spot's already produced a bite. It's definitely got itself into some weed. So much weed. I'll try and get his head up before it comes into that big weed bed. You can't afford really to give the fish much line in here. You know, sort of play him, bully him a bit. putting pressure on to keep the head up. As soon as they bury in that weed, they go solid. Doesn't look as, as big as the other ones, but I'm not gonna complain. Third fish of the trip in the net. Come on. Well, 
Well, there we go. What about that for a fish? Third fish of the trip, third bite. And I've actually found another spot that's working. The middle rod, spent all that time yesterday afternoon leading around trying to find a new spot for that. And it's gone off and ripped off at six o'clock in the morning, same time as bite time yesterday, with this 20 pound, six ounce mirror carp. And it's pretty much a linear. The other side is probably arguably the better side, but I'll give you, let you have a look at that in a second, but what a result. Free fish, come on. Well, this side of us absolutely pristine. And there's those linear scales that I was on about. What a cracker that is, and what a way. This is the last fish on the trip for me. I've got about four or five hours left. I'm confident of enough a bite, but if it is the last fish, what a cracker to end on. Three bites, three 20 pounders. A slipper back. Well, just the one fish so far for me this morning. We've got about two and a half hours left of the match before everyone's gonna wind in and go and congregate in the car park. So just to have a, a little gathering. And I think there is a trophy as well. So whoever's winning or whoever's won will receive a little trophy. Currently, I'm in first place. I think it's done on biggest fish. And my first fish was 23 pound, six ounces, 23 pound, four ounces. And I think that's still the, the biggest fish at the moment. So as long as no one else catches uh, one bigger, we should be walking away with the trophy. Well, it's come to the time where we've got to reel in, head down to the car park for the presentation ceremony. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It's very much appreciated. And until the next time, I'll catch you later.